Hi, this is Peter Jacobs with CalcBook, and today we're going to be looking at concrete rectangular beams, and specifically looking at flexure and shear design. So let's get right into it. So let's talk a little bit first, just a quick background on what we're going to be looking at here. So the first thing is flexure design, right? We have a couple assumptions that we're going to make. Um, these should be pretty familiar if you've done concrete design and, and you know learned it from the coursework, um, right? We're going to do plane sections remain plane, which is pretty typical for flexure design of, of you know concrete, steel beams, that sort of thing. Um, we're going to make the assumption that our strain in the reinforcement is equal to the strain in the concrete. Um, and then we're also going to assume that our stresses uh, are going to be computed using the stress strain curves for concrete steel. So your typical stress strain curve. So we have a rectangular section um, like this for a singly reinforced concrete beam, right, with height H, width B, and the depth of reinforcement D. And then we look at our strain distribution for that, right? You can see we have that depth C to the neutral axis, and then our concrete strain and our steel strain. Then we look at our stress distribution, right? We have our, our concrete compression block there with depth A, um, and then we have our, uh, our rebar uh, stress there on the bottom. And then that translates right into our forces, right? So we have the C sub C, uh, which is going to be the force in our compression of our concrete, and then we have T, which is the tension in our reinforcement. For shear, right, you know, the shear failures vary widely um, depending on the dimensions, the geometry, you know, if you have a deep beam or something like that, you can get strut and tie model, that, that sort of thing. Um, but for this particular example, we're going to be looking at a slender rectangular uh, section. And for that, we typically have shear cracks that occur at 45 degrees, um, and typically near beam supports, sometimes it concentrated loads, that sort of thing. But if we take a look at sort of a, a, a generic beam here on the right side, we have a simply supported end, and then the left side, it's continuous uh, with a, some distributed applied load. And you can see we get flexure, uh, kind of flexure and flexure shear cracks there uh, mid-span, and then we get shear uh, cracks towards supports. And then obviously over the continuous support, we get flexure and flexure shear cracks, but on the other face because the, the top face is in tension over the continuous support. Right, and here's just a, a visual example of a pretty uh, clear shear failure on each side there. And there's also some flexure cracking as well uh, in the middle of that beam. So for our problem today, um, we're going to be looking at a re rectangular section. Uh, you can see there off to the right, it's going to be 24 inches depth, uh, 12 inches wide. We're going to have three number seven bars for our flexural reinforcement. And then our shear stirrups will be number four at 12 inches on center. We are going to include our self-weight uh, for this uh, for this design. Our concrete compressive strength will be 4,000 psi. Our yield strength for our reinforcement will be 60 ksi. And we're just going to be looking at to verify the capacity of the concrete beam uh, for the given loading at uh, x equals three and a half feet, right? So right where that um, that point load is. And so I put left there in parentheses, right, because we're going to look just to the left of the of that uh, section cut there, because uh, the, as we'll see when we get into it, right, the shear diagram is going to be uh, changing right at that location. So we'll pick just to the left uh, of that shear of that uh, point load. And we'll we'll take a look there. So let's go ahead and open up CalcBook, and uh, we'll get into the design. All right, we've got CalcBook open, so we go ahead and click into our concrete module. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and click into the concrete member design, and then we're going to click in flexure and shear, and just select uh, the, both the flexure and shear design options, and then click confirm. And now that we're in the design module, right, we have some options here we need to, to select and enter in some parameters. So we first thing we can do is we can select a T-beam if we want. Um, we'll, we'll, go, we'll do a video on that later, but for now we're going to do just a rectangular section per the uh, problem statement. Right, we can we can select up to two layers of flexural reinforcement for the top and bottom, uh, but for right now we're just going to use uh, one layer of flexural reinforcement along the bottom, uh, which is what the problem statement asked for. Right, then we go ahead and enter in our dimensions for a beam. So it's 24 inches tall, it's 12 inches wide, uh, and then we're going to use 2 inches clear cover uh, all around, so on the bottom and the sides. Enter in our flexural reinforcement. So we have three number 7 bars. Our yield strength is 60,000 PSI. And then our shear reinforcement is number 4 at 12, so we're going to leave that as is. We're using normal weight concrete. You can select lightweight if you would if you would like if you have that for your design. Um, and then our 4,000 psi concrete, 150 pcf for the concrete unit weight, and then 29,000 for our modulus elasticity for the reinforcement. Uh, we are going to be using our beam loading uh, tool for this. Uh, so we'll go ahead and click over to the beam loading tab. 
This is actually the same uh, beam loading that we used uh, just a few weeks ago in our um, beam loading uh, video, which we'll post in the, the comments below, uh, so you guys can take a look at that. Um, so first, we're going to enter our beam length for 20 feet. Um, we are going to look at an analysis location at 3.49. So we'll explain this in a minute here, but the, the problem statement asked for uh, the beam design at 3.5 feet. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about this in a second of why we decided to use 3.49. Um, so we add our uh, dead load here. So we've got a point load of three kips at 3.5 feet from the left end. We've got a point load of five kips from 13 feet from the left end. And then we've got a live load of a uniform load here of 1.5 uh, kip per foot. Okay. Go ahead and select our load case two here, 1.2 dead plus 1.6 live. We can see our shear and moment diagrams. And like we talked about here, right, this this is where we want to analyze at three and a half feet from the left side. But you can see there's a, a pretty sharp jump in here uh, in the shear diagram from that point load we have. So we want to select just to the left of this so that we get the, the larger of the two shear values here at this change. So that's why we entered 3.49. Um, and for the moment diagram, right, it doesn't matter as much. The difference in moment between 3.49 and 3.51 um, is not that much in comparison to the difference in the shear diagram. So that's where we're going to go ahead and choose uh, the left side here for, for that. So now we've got our shear and moment diagram developed. We can go ahead and click into our flexure tab, right? We're confirming here we've got 4,000 PSI and 29,000 KSI for our compressor strength and our uh, modulus elasticity. And then we can confirm also that our demand is being brought over uh, from the beam loading tab. So then we can get into the capacity calculation, right? So we have our positive flexural capacity, right? We want to start by determining our, our strain diagram values so we can figure out our stress strain uh, diagrams, right? So what our uh, stress block is, that depth A for the concrete uh, compressive block here, right? Our beta one value, um, you know, depth to neutral axis, that sort of thing. So we develop all of these different parameters so that we can figure out what our uh, stress and strain diagrams look like. Once we have that, we can go ahead and determine our fee factor, right? For this case, it's uh, 0 0.9. We can check our minimum steel requirements. And then finally, our uh, positive flexural capacity for this section, which is 160 kip feet. So for this uh, section, right, uh, at three and a half feet from the left end, we are okay. We have a demand capacity ratio of 0 0.61. So we can go ahead and check our shear. Uh, and again, just confirming our, our material properties. Um, and then also our demand is being pulled over from the uh, beam loading tab. And then we can go through our shear capacity calculation, right? So we're going to check our uh, strength in shear due to just the concrete. So our square root of F prime C equation, figure out what our V sub C is. Then we can go into the steel uh, uh, capacity for our shear reinforcement, right? So looking at that A sub V. Um, and then figuring out what our nominal strength is for shear V sub S. And then finally determining what our total shear capacity is uh, based on uh, the concrete strength and the steel strength. Um, and that gives us a demand capacity of 0 0.42. So that's a quick look at our concrete uh, beam design. We've got some more videos coming up for our new newly released concrete module. Um, so stay tuned for those and uh, we'll see you next time.